In 2002, I was awakened in the middle of the night by a phone call from my fiance. Her voice was sharp and serious as she explained that a man had just entered one of our neighbor's homes and abducted one of their children. Our neighborhood was completely devastated and although she was later found, it took us a long time to heal. Shortly after that tragedy, my widowed grandmother fell in her bathroom and hit her head on the sink. She was wearing one of those emergency button pendants, but she wasn't conscious enough to activate it. So she laid on the floor for almost 24 hours before anybody knew there was a problem. Both of these traumatic experiences might have been prevented with the right technology, something that could sense when, where, and how people move throughout a space. 13 years ago, I set out to build a technology that could do exactly that. I had just graduated with my master's degree in electrical engineering, and I was searching for a PhD research topic. One of my professors had done something really interesting. He had taken a room and surrounded it with a number of wireless devices, inexpensive wireless devices. He then had somebody stand on the inside of the room, and using his understanding of how radio waves will go through walls, he applied some clever mathematics, and he was able to image the position of the person inside the room. He was building a system that could see through walls to locate people. Now, the experiment was somewhat contrived and the results were obviously very coarse, but this image of the person's position in the room immediately captivated my attention. Years of my life experiences, including the kidnapping, my grandmother's fall, they all made their way to the surface of my thoughts as I considered this for my PhD research. I knew that with the right development, if we could make this technology viable for everyday homes and businesses, the applications would be far-reaching. We could build the best security systems ever created. We could build systems to monitor our elderly loved ones or disabled loved ones without invading their privacy. We could save vast amounts of energy for our planet by automating things like lighting and HVAC. So, being the young and overzealous engineer I was in my late 20s, I marched into this professor's office. He barely even knew me at the time. And I said, hey, I want to work on this for my PhD. He politely declined, saying that there was no funding available for the project. Being the young and zealous engineer I was in my late 20s, I didn't give him a choice. I quit my job at a Department of Defense contractor. I brought my own computer. I found another professor to give me some space in his, in his lab, and I got to work. I'd show up at my professor's office on a weekly basis and give him updates on the progress I was making. After winning an international demo competition with our preliminary results, we acquired funding, and I became his official PhD student. Since that time, I've dedicated my entire career full-time to this development, to the development of this new technology that we call radio tomography. To understand what it is and how it works, let's go to Hollywood. In the movie Entrapment, Catherine Zeta-Jones shows off some amazing security avoidance limbo skills while dancing through a dense web of laser beams. In the movie The Dark Knight, Batman uses a network of cell phone signals to see through walls to locate where the bad guys are. Both of these systems are fake, and yet somehow if you put them together, they give you a pretty good idea of how radio tomography works. <laughs> but let's take a look a little more scientifically. Over a hundred years ago, genius scientists discovered a law of nature called electromagnetism. What they found was that if you wiggle a magnet near a wire, you can produce electricity in that wire, in that circuit. The opposite is also true, that when you push electricity through a wire, you create a magnetic field near it. These two fields, the electric field and the magnetic field, they interact with each other, they cause each other. In a ripple-like effect, 
that travels out through space into the space around us. It's called an electromagnetic wave. Now, most of us are already deeply familiar with electromagnetic waves, at least a certain kind. We call it light. Light is the energy of electric and magnetic fields rippling into our eyes. And when it does so, it excites the neurons in our brains and we see color. Now, just like a light bulb produces light, antennas are the devices that we use to produce a different kind, a different frequency of electromagnetic wave. It's called a radio wave. Our eyes can't see these radio waves for similar reasons that our ears can't hear a dog whistle. The frequencies are just out of range of what our human bodies can perceive. But radio waves will go through walls and obstructions. This is why your cell phone still works when you're inside. It's also why Wi-Fi will work in various rooms of your home. So understanding wireless communication is actually a lot simpler than you might think. We take an antenna, which is just a piece of wire in a special shape. We push some electricity through that. When we do so, it creates a magnetic field near that, which then interacts with the electric field and ripples out through space until it gets near a receiver device. When it gets near that receiver, the magnetic field wiggles near the receiver antenna, which is once again just a piece of wire in a special shape, and electricity is produced in the receiver. Now, stop for a second and appreciate that. Isn't that amazing? This explains why you can get on your phone and call somebody on the other side of the world with no wires connected and talk to them instantly. It really is amazing if you stop and think about it. So, what does this all have to do with sensing the location of people and radio tomography? Well, while it's true that we don't completely block radio waves, our bodies do disrupt them. Some of the energy bounces off of us, some of it gets absorbed, some of it goes around. Which means that if you are moving between a transmitter and a receiver, you, f you disturb the radio waves as they travel from point to point. Using some software, we can analyze those disturbances and we can determine that somebody's moving along that line or nearby. Now what would happen if we didn't just have two devices, but what if we used a wireless network? Now we have many links flying through the space and when we move, we will only affect certain links of that wireless network. Using the intersection of those links, we can now determine that somebody's moving, but we can also determine where they're moving. And that is how radio tomography works. Now it turns out, when we're asleep, we never fully stop moving because our lungs continue to breathe and our hearts continue to beat. This means that we can still determine that a room is occupied even if somebody's not moving. And we can also do things like monitor vital signs because the radio waves will fluctuate ever so slightly for health-related applications. It is true that there are other technologies that will do these kinds of things, but radio tomography has some unique advantages over existing uh, products. First is that because radio waves will go through walls, we can now cover an entire home. The, wall, the waves will go right through the walls. We can embed the devices inside the walls for better aesthetics, better security. And because no video is generated, this system preserves privacy much more than having a camera. One of the best parts of radio tomography is that it can be embedded inside devices that we already own. Things like our Wi-Fi routers, our thermostats, even our light bulbs and electrical outlets are becoming wireless. So as more companies adopt this technology and put it into, the, into their products, we'll be able to take advantage of, of the technology through the devices that we already own. Research on radio tomography is thriving now in academia but it's also matured well beyond university laboratories. My colleagues and I have built 
systems for SWAT teams to see through walls in hostage situations. We've built high-end security systems for sensitive gov government sites and gold mine storage rooms. While these applications are pretty impressive, the real impact of this technology will happen as it changes our everyday lives at home. Soon, your wireless network will be, your, be, will be a very sophisticated security system that will cover your entire floor plan, not just a door or a hallway. And no more ugly motion detectors or clunky security systems will be needed. If you have an aging parent who lives alone, the wireless network of the home can monitor the patterns of movement and then alert somebody if something looks like it's not right. Medical researchers can gather data about how we move in our spaces over a period of months and years and then diagnose disorders much earlier than without this data. They can use it to relate our behaviors to things that will improve our health as we age. If you leave a stove on and the patterns of motion have indicated that you've completely forgotten about it, our homes can politely remind us and then shut it down for us if necessary. Unfortunately, for teenagers of the future, mom and dad are gonna get an immediate alert when there's a party in the home. <laughs> Not only will our homes be enhanced by this technology, but also our commercial spaces. By taking advantage of modules inside the electrical outlets of a large building, we can determine occupancy without having a dedicated sensor in the room. This allows corporations to meet energy efficiency codes, saving vast amounts of, of energy for our planet by shutting down lighting and HVAC. In a, in a natural disaster or a fire, our first responders can know exactly where people are located throughout that building so that they can focus their attention on places that will really save lives. Sadly, my grandmother's fall was not the last time that an aging parent who lived alone needed immediate help. My neighbor's kidnapping was not the last time an aggressor broke into a home. The world still faces people like that. And yet I'm still an optimist. I still look forward to the future. More accurately, I'm a solutionist. The application of knowledge to create technology replaces our trauma and our fears with hope and excitement. For thousands of years, human curiosity has led us to observe the laws of nature, model those laws, and then build tools. Every time a key discovery is made in science. Engineers take those discoveries and build products that really do help us thrive mentally and physically. My colleagues and I are standing on the shoulders of giants. Over a hundred years ago, genius scientists discovered and modeled the laws of electromagnetism. Later, brilliant scientists figured out how to take the atoms and molecules in sand and create inexpensive wireless devices. And now my team and I are using those devices to detect when, where, and how people move throughout a space. And as we do so, we genuinely hope that we can help people suffer and fear less. Marie Curie was the first woman to have ever won a Nobel Prize. She once said this, nothing in life is to be feared. It's only to be understood. Now is the time for us to understand more so that we may fear less. And I couldn't agree more. Thank you.